you off to drink? Uh, no, I don't want a drink. I think you should have one. Ken? Gail, can you just give us a second? Ken, just sit down, actually. Just a sec. Carla, will you please tell me what's going on? There's no easy way I can say this, so I'm just going to come out with it, all right? Peter had an affair with Tina McIntyre. That's why we split up. Now she's dead. Ken. He's been charged with a murder. I'm sorry, I thought you knew. Oh, do you know, she'd run all the way up Viaduct Street after some mutt in a yard. I think she must be on heat. Ken. Ken! Oh. Ken, is that you? No. Oh. Oh, what's happened? He's gone to the shop. <laughs> <laughs> and that's bad because... Because I haven't told him about Peter yet. Uh. Can it be cured? Firstly, it's not necessarily as serious as it sounds. It's just a name that we give certain symptoms which Max is exhibiting. Secondly, I'm not going to give a definitive diagnosis. I'm going to refer you to CAMS. That's the Child and Adolescent Mental Health Service, where a child psychiatrist will make a full assessment. A psychiatrist? Calm down, babe. Just listen to it. Sorry, so if he has got ADHD, what then? Well, there are various treatments, both medication and behavioural. So we shouldn't be worried? No. But it's good to try and get this under control as soon as possible, for your sake as well as his. ADHD can be tiring on the parents. <laughs> you can say that again. Tell me again, why has he got it? I mean, what causes it? Some research suggests it's genetic. Others link it to environmental factors. Stress, diet. But the key thing is to get Max the support that he needs. Right. Come on. What's wrong with it? Nothing we can't make better. Thanks, Fred. Tell me everything. From the beginning. Okay. Um, started on our wedding day. Oh, yeah, they were at it for months, even while they were pregnant. You're pregnant? Well, Deidre really hasn't told you anything, has she yet? I was. I was pregnant. I lost the baby after Tina died. Carla. Oh, Carla, I'm so sorry. I had no idea. How did Tina die? She was pushed. Off the balcony of the builder's shell's flat. I was the one who found her. I always knew Peter was a philanderer, but... Yeah, well, I thought he was the love of my life, so we were both wrong. Why? What possible motive? He tried to break it off with her, apparently. She went berserk. She threatened to tell me, and then they was argued. He definitely there when she fell. I mean, could it have been suicide? No, according to the police. How do they know? She was also hit over the head with a blunt object. I'm sorry, Ken, I don't know how else to put this. I can see why Deirdre didn't want to tell you. Can you? I'd have been back weeks ago if I'd known all this. I'm so sorry, Ken. No, 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 you've got nothing to be sorry for. I'm the one who's sorry. Sorry and ashamed for what my son has put you through. Do you really believe he killed her? Two months ago, I'd have said never in a million years. But now. Ken! Oh, welcome home, love. I, I did nip round to number one, but Deirdre seemed to be in a bit of a flap. <laughs> but we expected you about weeks ago, actually, but got held up in Canada, did you? Uh, oh, right. Anyway. It's really good to see you, despite the circumstances. Yeah, seems like a lot has changed since I've been away. 
Look, we'll, uh, we'll catch up later when I've had a chance. Yes, of course, of course. Must be a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. Deirdre will be glad to have you home anyway. You all about Peter Pan? Favourite. Come on, I'll even do the Captain Up bits. Should we get your cars out, play wacky races? Hey, we can make an assault course out of girls' kitchen stuff, even though we're not supposed to. Is there something wrong with me, Mum? No, sweetheart, there's nothing wrong with you. You're perfect. My perfect, beautiful little boy. So why do I need to see more doctors? Well, do you know how sometimes you can't sit still, even when you know you should? They might be able to help. Do you know what else they might be able to help with? What? They might be able to stop you being so ticklish. <laughs> you are. Look how ticklish <laughs> you are. <laughs> you don't cheer up, I'll tickle you and all. It's not funny, David. Don't look big enough for a bedroom. Well, we could build out a bit, you know, a couple of skylights. I'm not sure I'd want one of the girls sleeping up there. I feel too far away. Well, we can't swing a cat in their room. And what's it going to be like when they start needing proper beds? Mm. And there'll be somewhere for the toys so they won't be in the living room. What do you mean we'd actually see the carpet again? Oh, imagine. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, fantasising. About a loft conversion. <laughs> Why? Well, it's tall enough, just. Yeah, no way we could afford it, though. Well, I can take a look at it if you want. Give you an estimate for your charge. Oh, well, there's no harm in looking. Well, yeah, if you don't mind, Jason. Not at all, love. Oh. Oh, hi, Ken. And did you get back? Uh, just this afternoon. Shame about Peter. So are you now as well? Yeah, I couldn't believe myself at first. I mean, he has been completely off his head and with the booze, you know. Says it's a right monster. Yeah, come <laughs> on. Ken must be knackered. Last thing he wants to be doing is... Chatting to us all day. Still, it's nice to be home, eh? See, Deirdre? You must have really missed her. He's been gone ages. Mum, will you just sit down? You're making me dizzy. Maybe he's gone to Fresco. Why would he? Oh, thank God. So, did you get what you wanted, Dad? Yes, thank you. This is for you. Oh, Ken. I should have bought you some duty free. How thoughtless of me. Oh, bless you, but you shouldn't have gone out without telling me. Oh, why is that? Well, she, she was worried that you were going to get some food and, and she's cooking. Well, nothing special. I bumped into Carla. Not tell me. <laughs> Everything, not even the affair, the pregnancy. I didn't know about either until it was too late, and and then Tina was dead. But that was weeks ago. You've had weeks to tell me. I'm sorry. Weeks when I could have been back here helping Peter, being there for him for my grandson. But you were so upset about his drinking. I was just scared about how you take it. How could you not tell me my own son was in prison for murder? What kind of woman are you? <laughs> Look, can't you see that she's upset? This has nothing to do with you. He's my fiancé. He's part of this family now. I did tell you that. And I hoped it wasn't true. He's a good man. Seems you inveigled your way in here very well. Right. Well, I don't know what that means, Dad, but I don't like it. Neither do I. Well, I don't care. This is my home. Now, get out. <laughs> I live here now. There's a lot of things round here going to change. Dad, you can't just walk in I here and... I can do what I want in my own house. Just stop it, please. <laughs> I want to speak to your mother alone. Right. Well, come on, Rob. Let's give him some space. Uh. What else have you not told me about? Uh. 
Thank you very much. We'll get our best man over to you first thing tomorrow. Not at all. Mrs. Acton, was it? Well, <laughs> OK. Bye-bye now. Bye. Well, that's another person who's seen our flyers. Nice work. D did you, like, get our best man over? She doesn't have to know he's our only man, does she? Right, go on, what you have. No, come on. Let me buy you a drink. Oh, he is in a good mood. He's doing very well, you lad. Yeah, see? I'm not all empty good looks and effortless charm. Mm, really? A bit of direction's what you need. Mm, yeah, well, I'm certainly getting that. What can I say? I'm a hands-on kind of guy. And if it means you buy your mother a drink, well, then I'm all for it. So, uh, Sean, I'll have a double, please. Double? Coming up. There used to be one played, I do like to be beside the seaside. I remember thinking that was very odd in the middle of Weatherfield. <laughs> I was thinking of changing it to Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. I've always liked that. Well, there's nothing to say. You couldn't have several tunes for different occasions. Good point. Well made. You could have Christmas carols at Christmas. I could. Or happy birthday if you knew, say, it was Max's birthday. I could hire myself out for children's parties. <laughs> You'd make a fortune. <laughs> Gail, you are a genius. Well, I, I wouldn't go that far, Michael. I know. I should have told you. I'm sorry. I just wanted to tell you face to face. So why didn't you call me and say something has happened? I need you to come home. Because... Well? Because I was hoping it would go away. Hoping that they'd find out who really killed Tina and then Peter would be off the hook. But they didn't. And then he got arrested. And even then you didn't call? Even then? Because I was scared. Scared? Scared to even tell you. I thought you might blame me oh, somehow. Oh, for heaven's sake. Ken, it's such a mess. I, I haven't known whether I've been coming or going. All the more reason to tell me. I should have been here. And you wouldn't have been on your own. But I wasn't on my own. I had Tracy and Rob. I don't want to hear any more about Rob. You're wrong about him, you know. He's been a rock lately, and I've needed it. You wouldn't have needed a rock if you'd called me. <sighs> you just don't get it, do you? No, I don't. I don't see why you simply couldn't pick up the phone and ring me. You have been away for so long. Have you got any idea how hard it's been? For the first six months, I, I felt like a widow. I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't want to go away. And then I started to get used to it. I had to. Oh, so you're saying you didn't want me to come back, is no, that it? Of course not. I'm just trying to tell you how hard it's been. But that's what it sounds and like to me. you're not listening. You never have. That's something I've realised properly for the first time. How dare you turn this back on me! I come back to find my son in prison for murder, his wife's foster child, our grandchild, and you, you're trying to make me feel oh, guilty because up, I deserve it, you! Shut up, shut up, shut up! So, how is he, Peter? I don't know. He won't see me. He won't see anybody who's even sat to solicitor. Why? Because we suggested that he plead guilty. He isn't, is he? Well, he wasn't, but I don't know now. Like I say, he won't see me. But he's obviously innocent. What? Ken, he was drinking so much, it changed him. Peter is not a murderer. I can't believe you think he is. You didn't see him. He wasn't the same. My son is not capable of murder. I don't care how much he's drunk. How can you think otherwise? You watched him grow up. You're virtually his mother. You might have given up on him, but I haven't. Why aren't you dead busy? I'll make space. Can we really 
afford it. I'll do you, mate, Shakes. What's this? Telling Fizzy what a loft conversion doing. Really? Mm -hmm. Jason's your man. Have you discussed an estimate? Well, I just told him I'll do it and knock down price for him. No, no, I'll pay full whack. Shut up, you can't afford my mates. <laughs> right, well, in that case, I'll buy you a pint. Hi, Sean. Um, just half. It was really nice that you stood up for her. Well, I meant what I said. She's a good woman, your mum. She's been through hell recently. And you're a good man. And at least now Dad's back, things will look up for Peter. Except what can he do? You can get him a really good defence team. I, I didn't think Peter wanted to be defended. Only because he'd given up. Oh, no, Dad'll put pay to that, don't you worry. We'll get him the best defence team money can buy. Shall I get another round in? Mm. What time's your curfew, Michael? Seven. Oh, I've got time for a half. Well, the traffic might be bad. There's been an accident on the ring road. How do you know that? Because we had the radio on in the salon. <laughs> well, it'll be clear by now. No, your mum's right. Best not be late. And I've got a ready meal waiting. It's, um, it's been a pleasure chatting with you, Gail. Always is. Bye-bye, Michael. Oh, I'll have another one, though. Go on. That was uncalled for. He's got a curfew. You wanted him to go. Well, only because you were throwing yourself at him. He works on the street. There's no reason not to be civil. Yes, well, we're civil, and then the simpering. I was not simpering. Oh. I wouldn't go that far, Michael. <laughs> so it's agreed. I'll be around to a proper recce first thing in the morning. Yes. Yeah. You can't. You can't. You've got an appointment on Ascot Street. Since when? Came in an hour ago. Well, I've arranged yours now. You need to check with me before you take on jobs. Why? Why? Because that's my job. That's what I get paid for. Look, it's no problem. Just fit us in whenever. <laughs> well, Ty, why don't you come down the yard tomorrow? We can uh, discuss some figures, yeah? Well, Todd, I've told him I'll do it cheap now. Cash in hand. Well, sorry. We need to talk materials, labour, time. Every hour you spend working on Ty's lot, you could be earning double on somebody else's. No offence, Ty. Oh, it's all right. <laughs> this is my business. And I'm just trying to make it profitable. He has got a point, love. Hang on, hang on. Of course you can do stuff for your mates. Todd's just thinking of the bigger picture. Todd, where's your sense of generosity? Let's sit down tomorrow. We'll figure something out that everyone's happy with, including you, Tyrell. <sighs> he sounds desperate. You spoke to him. Well, they've got no reason not to speak to me. He sounded so... Detached. Anyway, I'm going to try and see him tomorrow, and I want to take Simon, seeing his son will lift his spirits. I doubt if Simon will go. He hasn't spoken to his dad in weeks. Oh, my God, you've let his own son desert him. See, you're blaming me. I knew it. Don't be ridiculous. This is why I didn't tell you. Look, I'm not blaming you for what's happened, but it's clear you've abandoned Peter in his hour of need. You abandoned us all. <sighs> I'm going to go to bed, try to sleep off this jet lag. Busy day tomorrow. So you don't want any food? No, thank you. At least we know what's wrong with him now. It's all my fault. Don't say that. I've been a terrible mother. Hey. Look at this last year. It's hardly been a stress-free environment, has it? You moving out, me behaving Look, like a... Max knows that he's loved, all right? And then a new baby. I've been so tied up with Lily, I've been neglecting him. There is no way that kid is neglected. He's got you, me, my mum, my gran, our Nick. I mean, he's got more family around him than most kids. It's that stuff I've been feeding him. Well, he eats the same stuff as every other kid I know. So why has he got this and not them, eh? No, he shouldn't park it there, yeah. It looks ridiculous. Uh, well... What happened? What did the doctor say? They think he's got ADHD. Well, that explains a lot. Oh, no. Well, if you ask me, that is just a fancy name for being naughty. That's not true, Graham. David, these days, it's depression if you're just a bit sad, or it's that dyslexia if you can't spell. Max is ill. They don't know that for definite. I mean, it's still to be assessed. Well, that's all right. At least it's nothing serious. How can you say it's nothing serious? He's got a mental disorder. Just a mild one. 
And the fact is, I gave it to him. Kylie. Oh, it's obvious, isn't it? Look at me. It's no wonder he's messed up. Kylie! Oh, poor loves. It's not a fuss about nothing, actually. Now, I meant what I said about that ice cream van girl. Really? Hey. Where's Dad? He's gone to bed. <laughs> oh, he'll calm down in the morning. I don't think he will. He's just in shock, that's all. All this time I've waited for him to come back with his arms around me. You weren't to know what Peter was going to do. I thought when Ken walked back through that door, I'd feel safe again. And whatever else, he'd, he'd hug me and, and I'd know that everything was OK. <laughs> oh. Oh. I don't want to go to bed. After all these months of wishing that he was there. You will be fine. You've got through worse. But we've never been apart for this long before. This feels different. You just need to get used to each other again. But what if we don't? Don't say that. You and Dad belong together. What if he never forgives me? <laughs> oh. well, the ADHD Foundation is available for advice and support on 0151 237 2661 from 9am to 5pm Monday to Friday. Or for further information, you can visit adhdfoundation.org.uk. Standard call charges apply from UK landlines. Mobile providers may charge more. Next, it's Long Lost Family. Uh...